I have one short light here. In the C-rank category of units in Gundam Assault Survive, there is a plethora of great units ranging from the long-range Zamel and the versatile Giridoga to melee powerhouses like the Blue Destiny Unit 1 and the R Jar Jar. However, there is a unit that is largely being slapped on, likely due to its unconventional appearance. The MSZ-006 Zeta Zaku, a variant of the Zeta Gundam that sports a Zaku head in place of its standard issue one. So, what makes it so special, you might ask? Well, to briefly sum it up, it has a lot of neat weapons on top of having decent stats. Stats-wise, the Zeta Zaku sports above average HP and defense stats against both beams and ballistic weapons. Same goes for most of the mobility-related stats, except for thrust capacity, which, while impressive, is still beaten by the F-91 J guns, some mobile armors, C-rank Gaza models, and the Bjarland. The radar stat, however, is rather weak, but given that you're using a head from the Zaku 2, it is more than understandable that the radar stat is just a single point apart from the one on the green machine. The balancers and the turning speeds are also above average. The LDR, it lets you get around fast and your armor isn't too shabby either. Now let's go get to the loadout. This goofy little thing is packing quite a lot of firepower, having three primary weapons, one secondary weapon and a beam saber for melee. Additionally, half of your arsenal has beam weapons, while the other half consists of solid type weapons. Two of them have a horizontally facing shooting guard from the left side and can be fired while moving. Given that the loadout is basically 80% identical to the one on the Zeta Gundam, of course with the stats being adjusted accordingly, your first primary weapon is the XBR MA782 beam rifle, whose performance puts it next to the Gaza D's knucklebuster or the Ashmar's large rifle. Second one is the Hyper Mega Launcher, which fires a sniper type beam, which hits harder than the main weapons of the Hyzek Custom and the Haman Korn's Gaza C, but it has less shots than those two. At the same time, it does stop you while firing. Though fortunately, it does the whole aim offset automatically, so if sniper rifles give you trouble, you have nothing to worry about. Your final primary weapon is the grenade launcher on your right arm, which you can fire while moving. And just like the beam rifle, you get to use the shooting guard when firing from a certain angle. If you are used to playing Noyan Bitter's Zaku F2, it's basically the grenade launcher from that one, but slightly less accurate. Unlike the original Zeta Gundam, you don't get the head Vulcans as your secondary. You get something much, much cooler. More grenades, in fact. Well, technically grenades. While you do fire them from the launcher on your left arm, the quote-unquote grenades are listed as missiles and perform a bit like the shield missiles from the Mark II. It does stop you in place for a brief moment as you fire it, though. There isn't much to say about the melee, it's your bog standard beam saber and it has the same combos as the Zeta. As for the special attack, it's listed as maximum shot, which makes sense considering that you pull out the hyper mega launcher and fire a powerful beam that looks and hits just like a shot from the burst liner. Now, Let's cover the defensive side of things. Obviously, your biggest strength is your mobility, but for certain situations, you might want to use the shield. The one Zeta Zaku uses is the shield from Zeta Gundam, albeit with less HP. Both the shooting guard and blocking do cover center mass, though the regular blocking does cover a lot of your lower half as well. So yeah, good stuff overall and definitely a strong yet underrated mobile suit. And while this is an April Fool's video, I am not being facetious at all. It's great! Now, the way you get it is somewhat simple. But you have to get the Zeta Gundam beforehand. You get the Zeta by advancing through the AUG 007 campaign and buying a Mephus as soon as you unlock it. That one's obtained through level progression as well, so you can't really miss it. Got that one? Good. 
Now let's unlock the part that you'll use for the research, specifically the junk parts, which can be acquired quite easily by playing the game for more than 2 hours total or clearing the first AA8 level on the AU side. You can alternatively unlock the Zeta by getting the Hyaku Shiki and the Mark II instead. But that's a much more costly and tedious endeavor. Alright, now that you have both of them, you should probably see the research plan for it in the shop. And from there you probably know the deal. I did cover that whole thing in one of my previous videos, so if you do need to look it up, I left the link in the description. Anyways, closing thoughts and summary. Pros, good mobility, versatile loadout, powerful against ships, easy to obtain and good damage against a single target. Cons, lack of expendable projectiles, smaller shield, cripplingly low radar stat, and you can't move the special attack beam like the GM Cannon 2. As for how much it'll cost you to get one, I did the math for you and it should be on the screen as I speak. As always, if you happen to enjoy my stuff, feel free to press any of that funky stuff below the video or throw some feedback my way if you feel like it. There's more stuff in the works, so I'll see you on the next one. Shirtlaid, signing out.